Hi, I'm Kylie from Exvium, and in this video, we will highlight helpful tools and macros to help you organize your Confluence content. So to start off, what is a macro? A macro is, an ex is a way to extend functionality of your Confluence pages, and they're easy to use. Um, so don't be intimidated. A lot of times when um, the word macro is thrown out, it might seem overwhelming, but in this demo, feel free to follow along and we'll walk you through how to use macros to um, create the best end user results for your Confluence pages. So to start off with, um, I'm going to show you what a macro looks like visually, then we'll get into um, creating our own page and adding some macros of our own. I'll highlight some of the um, most recommended from Atlassian. So to begin, we have a uh, example page here um, on our XBM site, and um, it shows you that you can have headings and different bulleted items. So that can all be edited within a macro and then the editing page as well. Other macros that you can include um, are different charts. You can add in um, and embed images and videos. You can add attachments. And there are, um, as you can see right here, attachments macros. So you could add a single attachment or you could have multiple. So instead of having to go to multiple locations to find those attachment items, you can download them all and attach them all in an attachment macro. You can also have information panels that kind of bring users attention to certain sections of your um, Confluence page. You can have different statuses that lets you know where work is and um, an expand macro, which is one of the ones that we'll be um, demoing in a moment, will allow your users to see more information upon expand, but also collapse it if it's a piece of information that's um, taking away or, allow, or causing lots of scrolling time. Um, there are also JIRA and Confluence integrations. We spend a lot more time specifically on that macro in a later video, so feel free to check that one out as well. So that's just visually what um, a lot of different macros look like. Let's go ahead and click on the blue create button. You can also see that there's a shortcut there to create and let's go to a blank page. Now to get started here, we're just gonna give this a name. I'm just gonna call it test macro. And what we're gonna do within here is go um, to that top white bar and you'll see a plus button with a drop down. That's where you add your macros. So once you expand that, you'll see a couple that populate automatically. This is also searchable. And if you click on the view more, even more options emerge. So there's a wealth of um, different options of macros that can be added. In this video, we're just going to focus on a few, but there is an additional video that dives deeper into um, more of these options. So I'm going to hit close for now. Go back to that insert macro. And we are specifically going to add an expand. So you'll notice that I typed the word expand. It was visible on that first screen, um, but just to show the searchability, that's how you would find uh, the specific macro that you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this. And as you can now see, a box has appeared that tells me here's where the title of that collapsed macro, what it's going to say. And then below is where all the expanded information will live. So for example, if I put right here, example, expand, anything that I put now below this is what will be expanded and collapsed upon um, using that macro in the finished page. So I can add in um, some items. I can add in emojis. You could attach links, you could attach files and images here. If you had multiple images and you wanted them to live within that expand macro, they can all live within there. In Confluence, once you have um, the information, including your macro, the way that you would like it, if you want to see what it looks like on um, the main page out of the edit screen, you click on the blue publish, and then it'll take you to the view of what you have created. So just moments ago is when we created this example expand. That's the macro that I, I added, the expand macro. I labeled it example expand. And if I expand the content, I now see my checklist and my emoji that I added. So that's always um, a good practice as well. Try out a couple of different macros, add in some information. If you're not sure about which one to use, 
press publish, go back and um, look at the view of it completed. If there's anything you don't like, all you have to do is go back to the pencil or you can press E to edit. Go back into the editing um, page of Confluence and this is where you can go in and edit that expand macro, add or delete any items as you see fit. The next macro we're gonna add in is our panel. So this is a way in which to highlight important information in a colored panel. So you'll see right here, um, it's listed as one of the top few. So we're gonna go ahead and click on info panel and you can actually add this um, macro within the expand macro. So if you have important information that you want to list within that um, macro, you can. You can also um, drag and drop it and um, add it below as well. So just depending on if you need it in a macro, you have that um, capability. You can also have it without outside of a macro as well. So for this one inside of our um, test expand, I'm going to go ahead and change the background color. So you have a couple of options that display there. You can also change um, the specific um, logo that appears. So right now it's an information. Maybe we have a specific warning that we need to add in and it auto changes that color, but you can go back and adjust that as well. It also has the option to select specific emojis. Um, so there are more options than what are displayed on that little drop down. If you were maybe letting us know that this is something that um, needs to be noted um, for an upcoming um, meeting, you could add a notebook. Again, the same is true with our um, panel that is outside of that macro. Maybe this is just something that we want everyone um, to just double check that they have covered. You could change the coloring if you would like. I'm going to make it a little darker. And then again, publishing, go back, look and see how it um, looks on the screen and you can expand it. Do you like the look of both of those there? And we're gonna go back to edit. Within each of those info panels, you do have the ability to type information. Um, so in here you could, I'm just gonna write info panel one and info panel two. So now that information will display within that panel. Again, you're highlighting important information. Um, it could be a warning. It could be um, a note. It could be something that we need to make sure we have checked off or an error that could be occurring. So again, really good for visualization bringing our attention as an end user to a specific section with the use of um, the panel is, is very, very helpful as well. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna do is um, action items. So with this one, you can create and assign action items to specific people. So again, I just typed in the search bar, action item, went ahead and added that one in and it tells you right away how this works. So it's giving you um, a drop down or a, a list, a checklist. And what you can do is at mention someone for a specific item of work. So for example, if I have um, item of work one and I want to assign that to someone, I'm gonna assign it to a list of people that appear. I'm gonna choose Vicki, for example. And now Vicki will get a notification that she's been at mentioned in this Confluence page once I publish it for this specific item of work. You can add as many items as work as you would like, um, and then you can at mention multiple people. Again, that interactive piece to take um, users directly to where they were at mentioned is very, very useful. The final macro that we're gonna work with for this section is a table of contents. So um, once you type in table, you have a lot of different options that emerge from here. What we're gonna do to start off with is just this table of contents. And what it's gonna do is automatically populate the information that you have within that page, that Confluence page, to help your users navigate through um, the information a little more clearly. You'll see that off to the right hand side here, um, a panel appeared letting us know how do you want to organize this table of contents? Would you like it in a list form? Would you like it flat? Um, do you want to display number sections? Do you want to have um, a heading indent or a separator? Um, 
This will help with the sizes of the um, table of contents. So right now it's set to a one. If you wanted it to um, be larger, you could do that as well. And um, you can also, sorry, I'll move myself out of the way, um, make it uh, cleared when printing, or you could leave it visible. So once you have it the way you would like it, um, you can close out of that. If you ever need to get back to that later, there's a little edit pencil that appears and you can click on that and that panel will reappear as well. You can also adjust the layout of the table of contents. So right now it's centered. You could make it wider and expand across the page more, or you could go the whole entire width of the page. So I'm gonna leave it there just for visualization whenever we go back. And in order for the table of contents to create the information um, that will walk you through all of the um, sections of your Confluence page, you will have to add in some headings. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, so you can go into your macro, you can type in heading, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with um, heading one. So what you're gonna do here is this is gonna label specific sections. So I'll just call it heading one, for example. And this will be for my expand macro section. If I wanna go down here and add in another heading, I can do the same thing, type in heading. Maybe I wanna use heading two, looks a little bit smaller. But now if we publish and go back to our visible page here, you'll see that off to the side over here, I have my table of contents, which if I click on it, would direct me right to heading one, and then same with heading two, if there was a longer list of information. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our example over here, just to show you what that looks like um, in a longer format. So all of these sections um, that look like the headings that we just edited are displayed here in the table of contents that was created here for this page. So if we wanted to specifically go back to just macros, we click on that link and it moves our page for us directly to that macro section. If I wanted to go back up to heading one, it takes me to the top of the page. So really good for quick, easy navigation around um, a Confluence page is a really good use of that table of contents. So we walked through uh, what macros are, how to access them. Um, if you would like to look through any additional ones, we have a video um, coming up that is macro advanced. So feel free to check that out to see um, a little bit more about uh, macros in that video.